while we're waiting for Jessica, um, we just want to touch on a few things. Let me see if I can get the focus back on me. Okay, so Jessica, just give us a wave when you're ready or say something in the chat box that you've closed out all your other windows except for this one. Um, so um, we want to touch on a few things that are happening. First of all, the TPP is being voted on, um, t I believe, tomorrow, today, tomorrow. It's happening right now. So it is really, really urgent that everybody emails your friends and asks them. I know you may not have ever called your representatives before. Make it really easy for them. Give them the phone number, especially if it's your local friends, um, and just say, please call um, you know, these people and make sure your representatives and make sure they vote no. It is uh, really going to be problematic for us if we can't label GMOs, if corporations can sue entire countries for labeling GMOs as a trade barrier. Um, it's just absolutely unacceptable that corporations would be controlling our um, our government at this level. Uh, the other thing is some some big studies and news has come out. And the Seralini team and Anthony Samsell last week actually discovered that glyphosate is contaminating the lab food that is given to the animals. Um, there are studies that are all the scientific studies that have been done about GMOs and glyphosate are pretty much uh, null and void because the control groups had glyphosate in them. And this is really stunning news because there's no way that the EPA can actually uh, consider these studies valid if they uh, don't have data to show that the control groups are actually a real control group. If you have chemicals in both the control group and the actual um, test group, then there's no way that um, you can see real results on whether or not that chemical or you know GMOs which are sprayed with that chemical are actually harming the animals or not. If you have the same types of tumors, the same types of cancers, the same types of health issues, then uh, there's no way to show that it's actually um, a, a valid scientific study. So um, I am hoping that that means that the EPA will not be able to um, uh, to reapprove glyphosate, which they're supposed to be doing in July, or now they're saying early August. They keep putting pushing it back, um, and I hope that's because of you know information like this, and because of finding glyphosate in breast milk, and because of the World Health Organization deeming glyphosate a probable carcinogen, and the Netherlands deeming it a definite carcinogen, and many countries banning um, glyphosate, and um, and many uh, doctors, 30,000 doctors actually in Argentina have signed a petition to um, get rid of glyphosate. So, all right, so we're gonna check with so and there's. Anybody else got any other news, got really pressing news that people should know about? Oh, besides which, our parades are happening in uh, less than two weeks now, 4th of July parades all across the country. And you can join in if you're interested about in these parades. The whole point is for us to raise awareness with thousands of people locally and millions of people nationally in a single day. And it's really easy. You just join into your local parade. Now, you may not be able to join in at this late date, two weeks away, but um, Jessica's group in Sacramento did. Two days before the parade, they just called up the city uh, council and, or the, the town, this uh, town hall and said, hey, can we join in the parade? They said, yeah, sure. You know, it's a 4th of July family-friendly fun event. Just join on in. So what you do is you go online and you order a banner. We still have um, some banners available. We still have boxes of free materials that you can get. You just paid for shipping. Um, but we do ask that you post your event first so that we know the people that we're sending out the free boxes of, you know, they're worth about $189 worth of materials. We know that those people are committed to actually passing them out. So if you go to events and sign up to host an event and you put you fill in all your information, your leader information, your address and where the event is. You have to put an actual address in the address section. You can't just put cross streets because then it won't map. Um, you fill all the information with an address and then you order, go on to, you get an email that will give you a free code for two boxes of materials. We suggest you get both the medium box and the large box because you'll get over um, seven 1,750 flyers by doing that, and you only pay, pay flat rate shipping, which would be probably, I think, about 40 bucks or something like that for both boxes. 
And um, that way, you have enough materials to pass out to thousands of people in your town who will then reach, you know, tens of thousands more because every family has, a, you know, several people in them. And um, raise awareness in a fun and family-friendly way. And you carry a big banner that says, Moms Across America March to either label GMOs or for an organic America or freedom to choose our food. Your pick, we've got three fabulous banners designed by our very own Ann Temple. And um, it's, it really is a fun event. You get to be out in the middle of thousands of people cheering. I mean, when do you ever get cheered when you're talking about or showing signs about GMOs? First of all, that, that's like a side thing. That's really kind of fun. But most importantly, it's the word moms and GMOs on the same banner. And people look at it, and they're like, hmm, what is that? Why are these moms? carrying a banner about GMOs and they start to get curious and find out about GMOs and then they start to find out that there's um, there are pathways to health that we can all we all have access to through eating organic avoiding GMOs and avoiding the toxic pesticides that are connected to GMOs that do not wash off that do not cook off and uh, do not dry off so with that said please join us in 4th of July parades in two weeks from now, go to events and you can read all about it. So host your own, join into one, um, get your free materials, pass them out. We've got great t-shirts as well. And now um, Jessica Denning is going to explain to us about the hidden, the hidden GMOs in our food. GMOs where you would never expect there to be GMOs. And I'm sure she's also going to talk about glyphosate a little bit too because Glyphosate is the number one chemical that GMOs are engineered to withstand, and they're sprayed on 80% of GMOs, and they're also sprayed. Glyphosate is also sprayed on uh, non-GMO food and non-organic food as a drying agent. So that there's that factor as well. But first, she's going to talk about GMOs, which are genetically modified organisms, which have been engineered to either be a pesticide, meaning it's registered with the EPA as a registered pesticide or it's genetically engineered to be an herbicide and that means it's sprayed with herbicides that do not wash off, do not cook off, do not dry off and um, it's very concerning and in, in addition to that GMOs have been shown to cause DNA mutations and um, that's not something that I want to feed my kid I've got enough to worry about so um, I hope you all listen carefully Jennifer Denning is a, a teacher and she's got a um, presentation to share with us Okay. Go ahead, Jessica. Okay. So I got this from uh, Chris Stevens. I don't want to take all the credit. And I learned so much, even though I've got 20 copyrights in rotation diets, and even though I am a science teacher, that I decided I'd be spending, and I have been the rest of my life telling other people about this, because I had no idea that I was eating GMOs uh, for 15 years. I didn't find out until three or four years ago. So Chris gave me this basket. It's a shopping basket. And on, I had a sign. It said, what would you put in this basket? So if you were, sh and I need to put that back on, but a lot of people borrow my basket. We use this uh, to teach uh, all around Sacramento. And so it's lost the sign. And the other, so when I go shopping, I start out with just this pure cane sugar container. That's C and H. And I'm not exactly sure how to get all of this in. Oh, maybe I can put it up here. Okay, and so the pure cane sugar, I ask people to tell me if there's GMOs in here. I mean, it says pure cane sugar, right? You can believe what's on the front of the box, right? And nothing on the front of the box is legally binding. The only thing that's legally binding is usually here under the nutrient facts. And uh, it says that it is sugar. Well, you know now that 100% of the sugar beets are GMOs because they, the farmers had to choose GMO or not. And I guess because of the processing plants and they went GMO. So this is cane sugar. So that should not be GMO, should it be? And look on the very here in the corner they put 100% pure cane contains no beet. Just so that you were really sure when you got this container that it's not beet. So will you put this in your shopping basket because it's sugar. Now that's pretty confusing, isn't it? It doesn't say cane sugar. And I've written to them, sugar used to mean cane sugar, but there was a hurricane in the Caribbean, and then the sugar growers decided they needed to have another way to keep a more stable sugar supply, so they started with the sugar beets. 
and they haven't changed this, but cane sugar means cane sugar in the past. And that's why we put here. So that is, I would put in. Then, there's the kicker. CNH, pure cane sugar powder. powder. Now that sounds like it's really all cane sugar, right? But if you look on the side, and I have people looking almost always if I'm teaching older women, they can't read it. <laughs> they make the writing, the first game is called Hide the uh, Ingredients. So I bring a magnifying glass for them to read. But uh, this is got sugar, and the second ingredient is cornstarch. So what is first on the list is what there's the most of. And it's mostly sugar, which we just figured out is is beet sugar because sugar, I mean it's not beet sugar because sugar means cane sugar. And then it's corn, so this is GMO, so you wouldn't put this in your shopping basket. How about so, this? Yes, Jessica, one second about the sugar. So the pure cane sugar that you showed us first, mm -hmm. we, we do want to preface is likely sprayed with Roundup and glyphosate as a drying agent, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah, so it's unless it says organic, we don't want to buy that sugar. No, and um, I do say this to people who have as much experience as you have, is that one out of four every year of our sugarcane field workers in Guatemala is dying every year of kidney failure. And in uh, El Salvador and in Nicaragua, in Sri Lanka there's 400,000 people with kidney failure. And, and 20,000 people go from failure in Sri Lanka. So they banned Roundup glyphosate from Sri Lanka and Monsanto sued them. So this audience is pretty savvy. For myself, if I had a choice, I wouldn't buy non-organic sugar. When I see all the widows and orphans coming over our southern border, people say, why are they all coming? Well, what are they going to do? Their husbands and fathers are dead. And I don't buy organic sugar because I know on the other end there's the farm workers. Oh good, look at this big organic sugar she's got. Woohoo! I'm just gonna go get mine. That's great. <laughs> so it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, and there's all kinds of organic sugars, other alternatives now. There's organic like coconut sugar. Right. There's um, um, there's all different yeah. kinds of um, sugars that you can get now that are that are uh, just completely different from you know the cane and the um, the beet sugar as well. And so this is not going to go in our shopping basket. Now, since is that was that Esther that brought the uh, or Anne? That was Anne. Yep. Anne brought the thing. Since you're bringing containers, Lori just uh, joined us. Go ahead. Uh, Lori just joined joined us. Hi. Um, I want to show you a quick trick I have for shopping. An easy way. Very little packaging. I save twenty five percent and only have to do it once a year. That is, I get a popcorn tin. A popcorn tin exactly, perfectly holds 25 pounds of rice, still cut oats, or beans. You won't believe how it just disappears in here. And then once I've got it in here, it is secured, and I have my food for the year. So where I shop at the co-op, and they are, they're all going, they, as of October 2013, they're non-GMO, uh, and swapping out everything that wasn't, and they're basically organic. I save 25% ordering this way. I save all that packaging. And I, I know I've got good organic um, rice or still cut oats or beans, which I get from Rancho Gordo Beans. They have 39 kinds of heirloom beans of sensational flavors. You I, I like a taste of Rancho Gordo beans, and I say, wow, that's what beans are supposed to be like. So I buy a bunch of those and put those in um, my popcorn tin. And I have my beans for the year. And uh, now, the I will tell you, up in Oregon, there's a place called Hummingbird Wholesale. My sister's up there. They have organic bulk food at phenomenal prices. Um, let's tell. Hi, I, I can't talk now. Talk later. Bye-bye. Okay, so this is um, on the sheet that I sent. It's got muscles. Okay, Gia. Mm -hmm. I can so screen share that now. I'll just screen share that. Okay, these are the foods that are right now GMOs. And I hand this out to everybody in my workshop. Because when you buy these, if you buy organic, you will not be getting GMO. 
Otherwise, you're going to have to look for some other kind of seal. And I'm going to explain the different kinds of organic. We have a lot of different qualities of organic now. But uh, you'll see that we have um, basically 100% of these on the market are, are GMO, the corn, soy, canola, and cotton. Uh, cotton seed oil, which is basically a junk food oil. Did you yeah, know 25% of pesticides are used on cotton? That's because I don't want mine. So when I, you know, when I buy clothing now, I buy organic, and it feels so much better on my skin. I can't believe the difference organic cotton feels. But if it were food and cotton seed oil, it's going to be GMO. It's going to be loaded with pesticides. In fact, the arsenic we're getting in rice now is due to the um, arsenic that was used as a pesticide on on cotton fields. So right now the Roundup we're using is going to be another generation's problems. But then sugar beets, 100% Hawaiian papaya, are uh, almost all GMO. And now we have a little bit of zucchini and yellow crookneck and this sweet corn. Last year was 5%. Of the fresh sweet corn was GMO. This year, a lot more. And uh, actually, alfalfa for cows, sorghum, Arctic golden, and granny apples, which aren't on the market yet, but the apples will be on next year. They're trying to get our basic foods so that we just figure out it's all GMO, but it's not. You can see it's just these foods. There's hundreds of foods that are not GMOs. And you have to look in processed foods also, if you're looking at that page, for the, like the oils um, that could be mixed in with things or if they're feeding the animals GMOs and then you're getting concentrated pesticides, the animal part, the big advantage of being vegan is you're not getting concentrated pesticides and herbicides in the fat of the animal because a lot of, it's, of that um, pesticides are oil soluble. And I would recommend to everyone to watch salmonconfidential.ca. If you want, they, she shows you how to find if you eat salmon, a healthy salmon. And um, Alexandra Morton uh, is a filmmaker who dipped into the waters off Vancouver Island. Vancouver Island, and she found that the fish there had a kind of salmon leukemia. And it's a great a de detective a story. Little. You'll really love to see salmonconfidential.ca. It's free. What is it? Yeah, she's been barking you all day, hasn't it? Jim? Yoo-hoo! Okay, come on, sit up here. I'll get it. So, um, anyway, yes, if, if these are all people. These are mommies across America, and they want to learn how to teach, how to shop with your dollar and not eat genetically modified Foods. So I'm going to keep talking with them. I fold up your pants so they shouldn't bother you. Fold it up. So that, No, if you fold it down, you're going to have a sticker again. Okay, so then, um, whoops, here we go. So this is the uh, animals fed the GMOs, the animal products, the processed foods, whatever it's processed, it has more than four ingredients. Is anything white in it? I don't eat it. But basically, I cook everything from scratch. So I like to go to the farmer's market and uh, get my fruits and vegetables. My husband and I eat whole plant food, eaten whole. And that way, once you shop organic, then you know what you cook is going to be healthy. And you can see the dairy and the um, restaurant food is a challenge. I, we usually order steamed. Or we like to order curries at the Chinese restaurants. When Jeffrey Smith stayed with me, he liked to order curries because he said they weren't using the oils. I guess they use coconut milk in them. So it's kind of a challenge. We do baked potatoes and salads, but uh, avoiding GMOs in a restaurant is really it's such a delight because the restaurant market is responding now that we are buying non-GMO. Chipotle's has gone off non-GMO, nationwide, and uh, it's inspiring that they were the first, they were willing to just list what was GMO, which is all we've ever asked, is just to tell the truth. So I have a lot of respect for Chipotle's and their integrity. They use local, uh, fresh, uh, as much as they can, supporting their local growers. So uh, then the other side, if you can go to that one, Zan, the second page, yep. the other side of the page I give to people, and this has all the seals. If you go up to the top, you can see that there's the Demeter seal, 
That is the seal of the biodynamic grower. If I had to choose between uh, organic on the right, USDA organic, and Demeter, I would choose, well, what would you choose? Would you choose, I mean, USDA, it's certified by the USDA. Doesn't it sound good? Yeah, I've never heard of Demeter before. Please tell okay, us. That's, that's the biodynamic, and uh, I, we have Raphael Garden. You can buy Demeter grown things, biodynamic things, through Turtle Tree Seeds catalog. They make astonishingly vigorous, hardy seeds, and you want to look at the initials. In this case, I put Grow Your Own, and I put RG next to it. Raphael Garden, because for the Sacramento Valley heat, for 30 years our gardener has selected the last bolting lettuce. So you can grow lettuce in Sacramento Valley without it bolting the flower. There are also other initials for Oregon and other states. So I recommend anyone to go to the Turtle Tree Seed Catalog and get that um, catalog and look at the initials. And find the nearest, the kind of biodynamic gardener who has the most similar grow, uh, microclimate to where you are. And then, then when you grow those seeds, you'll be most successful. And I mean, uh, Jessica, can you please tell us what biodynamic means for people who are not aware of that? Uh, it comes from uh, Rudolf Steiner and the Waldorf education system where they educate children through nature. And so... Uh, Rudolf Steiner, for instance, 50 years ago, predicted that the bees would collapse. Very interesting. But he believes in the whole cycle of life, and, and on the in the garden there's cows and chickens and sheep and ducks and uh, every kind of bird and, and bee and insect. So when you eat Demeter-grown or biodynamic-grown food, it's more and more unique all, every year because they don't put anything on the garden from outside the garden. In the USDA certified organic garden or farm, they're allowed to put confined animal feeding operation more. Stop it. That's something the Organic Trade Association succeeded. They're continually trying to degrade the standards so they can sell regular conventional produce as organic. So you could actually be buying animal products that are organic and they that cow or chicken has been fed, um, uh, how can I say this? The, oh, you the, the, no, how can I say it this way? The produce that's grown on the USDA organic can be fertilized with animals from the confined animal feeding operation. So, that means you're getting all the pesticides and herbicides concentrated in that manure on your on that organic garden. That's the problem right now with the USDA organic seal. Whenever it's the government doing it, the the corporations that captured it, and that's why I'm showing you the different seals that have integrity. So Biodynamic has integrity because they don't add anything from off the farm, and. Uh, it gets more and more unique because they make a tremendous effort to build the probiotics. They put on valerian tea and they put on nettles that they ferment every month. And each one of the mixtures that they put on brings certain probiotics to life and micro minerals into action. If you're familiar with anything of it, it's just a lovely spiritual place to go, a biodynamic garden. Okay, now you'll see next to the Demetel seal is the Healthy Traditions. And uh, the delightful thing about that is they have tested all of their products for Roundup, for glyphosate. And they actually went for months this year not being able to sell oats and a bunch of other stuff because they couldn't find any that didn't have Roundup. So it's expensive. But if you really need to eat glyphosate-free, Happy Traditions is the most. Uh, uh, has the most integrity and it's just very inspiring. Now, in the middle it says CCOF. California Certified Organic Farmer. That is, I'm proud to say, regularly tested for Roundup. Okay. So it's got a lot more integrity than the USDA Organic. When you can find CCOF, and California is making a third of the produce in the nation. Okay. So what is it, Jill? You Your movie went away? That's commercial. Oh, okay. It's commercials. All right. Sorry. All right. So then um, the... CCOF, if I had a choice between USDA Organic and California Certified Organic Farmer, 
Does, is anyone here that knows about Oregon Till? Do they still have the integrity? They do. Okay. So certified organic farmer, Oregon Till, Maine has got incredible certification. So I would go with any of these ones that are not government in a heartbeat versus the USDA. Now here we have this delightful thing called certified naturally grown. That's in response to the CAFO fertilizer on USDA organic. Certified naturally grown doesn't require all of the paperwork that USDA is crippling the, their farmers with. And it's, it's simpler to get and it does not allow any CAFO fertilizer. They're, they really have integrity and we're finding farms springing up around here that are certified naturally grown. Let people know about it so they can get uh, certified and we can actually have a system that means something. Below the USDA... Jessica, yes. wait a second. So certified naturally grown means no CAFO manure. Does it mean no pesticides? Um, they are really... yeah. They are more, more, much more rigorous than organic. Yeah. I wish I had the page. You know, I should put stuff here. It's just a delightful seal. Look up certified naturally grown. That's great. Um, yeah, it is. Because uh, forget organic. I mean, it's what we have. We're stuck with. But you can see we're replacing it with CCOF and certified naturally grown and, and Demeter. So there are other uh, choices like uh, national co-op grocers. So when you're buying from your own farm stand or your own grocer, then you have a, some conscience there going on. Below USDA Organic is the butterfly with the non-GMO project certified. That just means it's not GMO seeds. It doesn't mean that they're not using pesticides. So um, it's a huge advantage over GMOs. It essentially means conventional. But it is, uh, I'm, that, what can I say? That is it, non-GMO. I'm getting more and more. And so here's a fun thing. Here's Tamari sauce. Wait, and let me stop. Let me stop sharing. Oh, wait a second, because they can't oh, see. Oh, okay. Oh, they can't see. You can't see me. There you okay. go. So this is a couple of bottles of Sanjay Tamari, and this Tamari. So would you choose between this one? This says non-GMO. It says certified gluten-free because I'm celiac, and then it says this one says non-GMO, but it says organic. So choice. It's just a lot of it is just reading the labels. You can choose to get the non-GMO, but that soy could have been used with pesticides and herbicides, so they actually have both. They have organic. Now they have another one that's not gluten-free. There's lots of others they have. But I go with the organic uh, tomato sauce, and yeah. that gives me uh, one I that really tastes good and that I can enjoy. This is tuna fish. So when you buy tuna fish, would this have GMO in it? So in each case, I'm putting them into the basket if I would buy them. So, so far I've got one sugar and I've got two tamari sauces. This is solid right albacore. Did you guys all write down about salmonconfidential.ca? Don't go to salmonconfidential.com because that's been brought up by some Monsanto troll who's making Alex uh, Xander Morton look very bad. You have to go to .ca for Canada. An amazing, amazing movie on salmon and saving the salmon because the farm salmon are spreading leukemia, which is uh, the lice spread to our wild salmon and kill them. So this albacore tuna. Oh, there you are. Oh, you're putting up Salmon Confidential. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. A woman of courage. She pays $200 per lab test because Canada will not test for the salmon leukemia. It's like mad cow. They don't want anyone to know. There she is. This is Alexander Morton with the white hair and um, Vaskovich, her helper beside her, the filmmaker, the photographer. It, right. Just if you want to have a fun time with the kids watching that. The great thing is she goes into Costco and the supermarkets and the sushi bars because they won't give her any farm salmon to test, so she just goes and buys it from the store to find her salmon leukemia. Um, okay, so this is tuna. And on the label it says, I'll read it for you, water, salt, and uh, white tuna. Now, would you guess that that has GMOs or not? Water, salt, and tuna? Mm -hmm. I would say that does not have GMOs. Pretty much, basically it doesn't. But did you know salt has dextrose to make it free-flowing, unless it's sea salt? And what is dextrose? Corn sugar. Wow. So all conventional sugar 
has corn GMO corn in it. That's why Morton Salt paid five thousand dollars to fight Prop Thirty Seven on labor. They don't want anyone to know that we're salting. But can you hi Noel? Bye bye. Bye bye Gia. So <laughs> so when you're salting your food with conventional salt, you're salting it with GMOs. But it's a very small amount. For many people, they just can't make the trouble to go with kosher salt or sea salt that doesn't have the dextrose in it. So dextrose, we want to avoid dextrose. Yeah. And we want to avoid uh, traditional salt. So would you suggest like Himalayan sea salt or? Oh, excellent. Himalayan sea salt, yeah. yes. Each of the salts, uh, hold on just a minute, let me turn that off. Okay. Let me mute her for a second. Is it, oh, I guess it's okay. As soon as the dog sees her, she's fine. <laughs> All righty, here I'm back. Okay, there we go. Back. Uh, so, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear okay. you now. Keep so, going. I apologize. I was babysitting, and uh, I'm babysitting for the moms going down to the Capitol in California to fight a bill that's there, and uh, also for a dog. <laughs> so. It's, Kind of busy. Well, thank you, Jessica. I'm going to screen share your, your image again here, okay? Yes. So you can keep talking about the labels. I find this fascinating. Doesn't everybody find this fascinating about the labels? Really fascinating. Okay, keep going. Okay, so when you're voting for the uh, CCOF, California Certified Organic Farmer, or Healthy Traditions or Demeter, or Certified Naturally Grown, you're voting for an organic world. And the, what is good to do is to cultivate the companies that are supporting the world that we want. And those, if you go down the list, the National Co-op Grocers, there's 159 groceries across the United States. They were the first. They had the courage in October 2013 to announce that they'd eliminate GMOs and get rid of the ones they have. And then all, and all of the produce in our co-op is organic. Is that true with all of them that in uh, the co-ops that their produce is all organic? No, no, okay, that's just a not choice. All, not all co-ops, no. Okay, that's a choice we made here in Sacramento. For people that are members of the National Co-op Grocers, it may be different, but they're all all going to non-GMO as quickly as they can get uh, non-GMO lecithin and all the rest. So Whole Foods uh, has said they'll be GMO-free by 2018, and they're driving the entire U.S. food chain because they... As the farmers told me, you know, I got 300 acres of GMO soy. I want to convert to conventional, but I can't get silos. I can't get trucks. And Whole Foods' decision to do this has given those farmers a market, and they can bring in the dedicated silos and trucks and supply chain and mills to be able to go back to uh, non-GMO and organic. Raley stores. Who has a Raley's uh, Bel Air food source? And near you. Is there anywhere they are or is it just California? No. No, I think that's a Northern California thing because it's not even in Southern California. Yeah. Well, I guess the, the tale to tell is, she's my neighbor, but every time I go into Raley's, I talk up the fact that they don't have any GMO produce. We sent a letter to their head of marketing and we asked, um, is your uh, something GMO, something that was like papaya or whatever, I don't remember what it was, and uh, William Fingerson did. We got a letter back and it said it's the policy of all of our stores to carry no GMO produce. And ever since then we have told everybody to go shop Rayleigh's Bel Air Food Source in Knob Hill. And every time I go into the store I tell the checkers, I'm there, I'm here because you have non-GMO produce and fish. And she is non-GMOing her entire huge store. She's a billionaire. But I mean, she has non-GMO uh, certified soy milk. Uh, and this two months ago, she sent a letter to her supplier saying, "We will accept no more GMO products in our house brand." So she's getting rid of. She said, "I want you to get rid of all the GMOs in there. If you can connect with your local grocer and send everybody there, <laughs> so that they get support." We have now got 130 organic produce items in our Bel Air next to me. I told them, you should put an organic sign up. You're the first mainstream store to go organic. And just praise the ones. You know, praise works. And just acknowledging those checkers. When I go around and tell them, I'm just so proud of them. I'm so glad to, to be able to send people there. So I would, whatever your market is near you, 
and maybe just a small one, but let them know, you know, that what a GMO is and why you care and that you only buy, I'll tell them I'm only buying non-GMO. Some people keep this GMO from shopper sign in their shopping basket as they go around. Karen Hudson does. As she goes around the store, she has a cardboard version of it, and she, um, everyone can see her sign. Uh, we've got a bunch of restaurants now that are going organic. So then um, we have a lot of, a barrage of laws coming in to stop, preempt our ability to go non-GMO and to have local control. In California, we have the California seed law that was passed last year that says that no city, county, or district can go and grow any plant crop or seed without the California Department of Ag approval. We have another one that says from California Department of Ag they can spray uh, 79 pesticides without public comment, and they're doing it. They're saturating the neighborhood near me. Um, and we have this, which you will have paid attention to, which is it's TPP. TPP is being voted on tomorrow in the, um, Washington. And uh, if you can tell your senator, email them, call them, and I'm sure all of you, you guys all know about the TPP, right, tomorrow. That would preempt any food standards that we have, and worse than that, it would preempt the good standards that they have in other countries, because most of the other countries are labeling and having better standards than us, and they want to just force oh, the... It does, Jessica, it does things like let GMOs be labeled as natural, doesn't it? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. That that there'll be all kinds of things. The fact that we lose our country of origin labeling, so you won't know whether you're a chicken or if you eat chicken or beef if it came from China or anywhere. So um, they want to yeah, reduce the herd made, made in America. Yeah, we're going to lose a lot. Of anyway, they're getting a lot more employment. We're going to see much more of the money go to that top one-tenth of one percent and a lot the disappearing middle class with TPP because uh, it preempts our local control and the ability to generate income for ourselves and buy local produce if you cannot know. The, the purpose of the Trans-Pacific Partnership is to reduce trade barriers and uh, be able to market. Trade barriers. Yeah. They make free trade sound like a good thing but it actually reduces, um, it, 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 it gets rid of our sovereignty, our state sovereignty, our local sovereignty. All of a sudden now, um, any type of standards that we might have. I was talking to a guy in Australia. They have certain standards about their dog food. But as soon as the trade opened up with China, all kinds of Chinese dog food flooded the market that had um, you know, all kinds of chemicals and toxins in them. And so it's yeah. really hard for the, and of course much cheaper. You know, So it's really hard for any state or, or local municipality to have a um, you know thriving local uh, uh, economy based on their agriculture if there's free trade which floods the market with cheap toxic you know uh, comp competitive uh, products so that's really difficult and Lori Olson from Washington is reminding us to please go to expose the TPP um, USA for actions there's a Twitter storm going on right now and there's a vigil, vigil down in downtown Seattle, and the TPP will be their way of pushing GMOs down the throats of people in um, in all the member nations, you know, in all different nations of that are that are uh, on board with the TPP, which involves Australia, New Zealand, um, I believe the like Philippines and like many different um, Southeast Asian countries. It is it's meant to sort of counteract the hold that the uh, the Chinese uh, trade has had on the U.S. There are many people in the Republicans and, and, and many different uh, Democrats actually too as well, many different parties that don't like the hold that the Chinese government has over the U.S. on the you know flood of Chinese markets, uh, products that they have in our market. So they're trying to create a trade agreement with other countries that will balance the level, the playing field so to speak, um, but what they've slipped in in the something I forgot how many 27 different agreements there's there's very few that are actually about trade but what they've slipped in are many many different uh, rules about uh, trade barriers making GMO labeling a trade barrier 
making, you know, all kinds of uh, f food, being able to be natural, allowing corporations to actually sue countries for creating trade barriers, and then having a special court system set up in order to um, oversee those trials. And of course, those people that are nominated to be the quote unquote judges are nominated by the corporations. So what we're talking about is a true global corporatocracy or oligarchy if you want to call it and that's being voted on tomorrow and so if your friends and family don't know about it it's time to get on your email and email all your friends and family to go to expose the TPP and to call their representatives and to let them know that you that you want them to vote no um, so yeah it's this is it doesn't even sound remotely legal as one of our moms is saying how the heck is this legal it's it's corporate that's what it is it's corporations buying out our government donating if you look at what you know people like um, uh, well I, I can't say names but all different representatives are um, being um, donated by from different corporations you can you can just follow the money and see why they're supporting it and and how they're supporting it so sorry to take that away from you Jessica for a minute but we just want everybody to see all this information and and get information about the TPP Go ahead with what else. Yeah, and so the TPP, another thing, thanks for all that information, Zen, on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Also, it's open-ended, so they can add any, it could add China when it's all done. They could add any country they want after they formed it. The other part is none of us are allowed to see it. I, I think that's all old news to you. But I think I can't uh, just emphasize it's just so hard to believe that even my, our Senator Feinstein voted for it. She said she wouldn't, but anyway. I know you all are struggling in your own states with what your senators are doing on that. Um, the first game is called Hide the Label. So this Hang is a on. Label. Hang on, let me stop sharing screen sharing. Okay, I'm going to go back to some product labels. Okay, good. They make it really small. They put it is, uh, in a color that's as obtrusive as possible, and they hide it under the flapper. So you can't see it. And oh my goodness. But when you actually look at it, if you had a magnifying glass, and if you could read against this reflective paper, you could see that this is GMO, just like this. Uh, <laughs> I think Gia took the other one, the Cliff Bar. What, what are you talking about now, Jessica? What was uh, it? The, well, hold on. Let me look at this. The first um, one. This is a Luna blueberry bar, and it says 70% organic. Can you hold it up? Okay. 70% organic, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, now this is a, a this is a treat that kids might like. It's a USDA organic wildberry apple, and it has um, certified organic ingredients. A lot of them are starting to just put a star next to each one. They'll probably do the same thing with GMOs, just to save space. And um, this is using just vegetables and fruits in it, and that's all. I had a Cliff Bar here. And the Cliff Bar is mostly GMO soy. Uh, Gia, oh, here it is. A Cliff Bar is mostly oh, GMO well, soy? I'm looking at this one. This is the uh, Cliff Bar. And when you read the ingredients on it, this particular one, now it might have changed over time, but this one says organic brown rice syrup. So the main ingredient is sugar. Second is uh, soy crisps with soy protein isolate. And it doesn't say anything about organic. Can you hold that up for us again to show us the, the, the package? Okay. Shows this healthy guy climbing a cliff. That's what I always show the kids. The yeah, front of it yeah. shows this really healthy guy. You could turn it up and have him falling off. And the problem with soy is that it has some of the highest residues allowed by the EPA of our food crops of glyphosate. And glyphosate is an antibiotic. It destroys gut bacteria. It is a chelator, meaning it withholds the vital nutrients of any living thing. It is a um, endocrine disruptor, meaning it can cause a halt or harm the development of a fetus. And um, and um, where somebody's also saying here, one of our moms is saying is that oh, Anne is saying anything isolate is bad, organic or not. Mm. And and do you want to explain what why isolate is bad? Is this well, certain process? I'm not the one, it should be the person who's who's the one that's saying that. I would certainly not want anything broken apart, but... I'm, uh, okay, can you hear me? Yep. Well, uh, 
the best example I can give for that is aspartame. Aspartame is three amino acids, and everybody's saying, well, it's three amino acids. It's 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 safe, but the the, the process is is that all these things need to work together. So if you're taking something out like an isolate, it can cause a, a ho horrible imbalance, and then it will cause um, a problems. So anytime I see isolate on the on the label of anything, I tend to stay away from it. Does that and, mean it's not a whole food? It's been separated. Right. Okay, right. and the body may have trouble digesting it. Is right, because because just like with aspartame, you need to have these other amino acids to work with it, kind of like. Uh, you know, turmeric. Turmeric's a wonderful thing, but you know, the curcumin. You need the. You need like pepper with it to help it work. Otherwise, your body won't absorb it. So. Okay. Okay. okay great. So Thank you. I look at you know, in talking with you, I see on the very bottom it says, um, "We source ingredients that are not genetically engineered, so they're not certified to be organic or." non-GMO, but it says made with organic ingredients. I just want you to know, made with organic ingredients, <laughs> that could mean they have 2% organic ingredients. Right. And the fact that we source them, you know, really makes you wonder. Language is very dicey. Yes, yeah, sourcing not does not mean made with either. It means they're trying to source, <laughs> right? Yeah. So if it says 100%, uh, organic, because when it just says organic with a green label, that means uh, or black, that means 95% organic. But if it says has the organic label and it says 100%, then that's really 100%. So the USDA organic is really not 100%. It has to say 100% with it. And then this made with it is just really crummy. So if this is uh, Eden, I love all the Eden products. I know the owner of it. And you know, like even his sauerkraut, he cans at a lower temperature so it doesn't kill off as many of the things that you want. But his is organic, 100% whole grain. Um, I don't see a seal on this one. This is pretty old. Actually, because I know him, I would trust it. This is, believe it or not, Jolly Time organic popcorn. Mainstream supermarket. Uh, brand and it is USDA organic non-GMO certified. So cool finding something, a brand that's 100 years old and they got it. This is Bob's Red Mill. Big surprise. When you read the ingredients on it, because it's a company with integrity, it says that it has corn in it and it does not say non-GMO. And We have called them, this is an old container, I don't know if by now they have non-GMO. Uh, corn, but they've been working on it. But I mean, here's something you have to even check something with, uh, like Bob's Red Mill that you would think for sure that they would be non GMO. And and some, people, some people wonder, Jessica, how do we check? Well, every single product has to have a phone number on it, and all you do is call up that phone number and ask them. It's going to take two minutes sometimes, and they will let you know. And uh, oftentimes they tell you we try to source, or you know, no, it's not, or whatever. Most companies cannot guarantee it because um, they say that the the sources are not available. Like it's just there's a shortage of um, non-GMO and organic. They're, they're working on getting the, the the products on the market. This is sweet corn. Unless it says organic, I wouldn't put it in my shopping basket um, because the sweet corn this year is going to have a lot more GMO in it. So if I put this basket on the when I table and I just put out some kind of tablecloth or I have a sheet of cloth I bought blue cloth that I put along my table uh, so it looks nice I put the basket and I get some of the IRT um, pamphlets I put out the Moms Across America I sure wish it had a picture of a mom or a baby on it though because that would grab people's attention the way the uh, we'll do yeah. that for the next printing. Perfect. Okay, and even their non-GMO shopping guide has a person face on it because when you're stressed, you don't see words, and yeah. you, and you're out shopping a lot of times. Stress. So when you get your, who I ask people, when you get your tuna, what if it was packed in soy oil? Would you buy it? No. No. So that's when they realize that you can use the same dollar. All you have to do is read the label, get the one packed in water, and you're not supporting that system. Um. Yeah, so that's kind of what I do. Just uh, do what Chris Stevens showed me. You really have to read that side panel. Thank you very much, Dan.
Great. Well, Lori just said that um, her chiropractor is passing out our Moms Across America flyers and their new patient bags. That is great news. We can ask our chiropractors and our holistic practitioners, our naturopaths, our iridologists, our acupuncturists, right? All kinds of alternative healthcare people, which, by the way, is not alternative. It's the way all healthcare used to be for thousands of years. <laughs> That's the kind of healthcare we use, right? Was Chinese medicine and herbs and chiropractic and you know all kinds of things like that. And they are, would be wonderful partners in getting the word out um, with uh, with our flyers. And um, Jessica, that was really fascinating. I'm sure everybody, even though we're all diehard GMO activists, we all learned something from that presentation. So thank you so much. Does anybody else have any um, questions before we sign off? Not Pardon, right. Does anyone want to add anything? Because every time I table, I learn something from the people I table to. Oh, I do want to add something. I know Anne wants to add something too, but um, I want to add something about organic wine. I just went to um, this great. Uh, I would just went up to Paso Robles, and there's this great little vineyard. It's um, this one's called Pipestone. It's one of the smaller mom and pop type ones, and she told me that the difference between organic wine and biodynamic wine is not exactly what we think that um, organic wine mostly means working with nature like what's right there it's cover crops the water that exists the you know the nearby chickens like or whatever you know the manure it's like it's it's just working with what exists in nature and biodynamic is sort of like a scientist a organic scientist having fun adding stuff into the soil so it's most she said it's mostly like a rich man's hobby that it's very expensive and that they add in stuff into the soil which is good stuff it's all it's all you know organic and um, it, it adds in um, you know different nutrients and minerals and you know things like that but um, that it's not necessarily definitely better than organic in, in, in the way that she farms and in, in what I'm saying with her so you just want to and, and the, the point to this is that you want to talk to the people who produce your food. You want to find out how do they do it. If I like the way organic, you know, they're farming organically, that's great. If I wanted, you know, if I like the way the biodynamic farmers farming and they're putting more nutrients in and I feel like I'm going to get more, you know, bang for my buck with more nutrients in that food, then that's great. But you want to talk to them as much as possible and find out how they're farming because you mentioned earlier that, you know, organic uh, you know, USDA government run, not good controls. But if you talk to them and you find out, you may feel, you know, very comfortable with them. So I just put that out there. Yeah. yeah. Then it's totally up to the grower the, how that food tastes. Yeah, the, yeah. the food from my dad's garden just spectacularly flavorful. He picked vine ripened his varieties. And, uh, that's really interesting that she has, I think she may is not that familiar with biodynamic because they do not have anything from off the farm. They grow their own nettles, their own valerian and so on in order to stimulate and bring out the micronutrients. But they're not, it's not a rich man's thing at all. It's what they've done in, in Germany and Europe for hundreds of years. Okay. Uh, organic, you're allowed to add certain pesticides. They do add certain kind of fertilizers. But at Harold Oven's thing, they don't add anything. And the purpose of it is, like in France or Switzerland, every village's cheese is unique. The flavors are unique. It's, they name that food after that village because the probiotics become more and more specialized because they don't add anything from off their farm to that food. Um, and you know, the thing is, so few people know about biodynamic. I'm just blessed to live by Steiner College. And to be a privileged to go in and watch him uh, garden. And, and they have four apprentices. If anyone you know wants to become a dynamic gardener, they can live and get paid here in Sacramento in the house, room and board free, to become a biodynamic gardener. There's four apprentices, and they go out and start farms. But you're right. It's, it's pretty elite because in the United States, uh, not that many people know how to farm with nothing off of your farm, uh, just using what you have. Yeah. Okay. We need to we need to wrap up. So it's again interesting conversation about organic versus biodynamic. Somebody else had something they wanted to say. What was the Ann? Who's Ann the wanted to say something. Can you hear me? Yep. Um. <clears throat> well, 
as most of you may know, or some of you don't, I do work in a lab, and I'm managing 9,000 rats right now. Not my favorite. <laughs> um, I told them over a year ago, I said, listen, are you guys uh, making sure you're using organic feed? And, you know, blah, oh, they just kind of brushed me off. Nobody there has ever taken me seriously. So this, this article came out, walked into my boss's office. I put this down. I said... I know we discussed this. I said, you know, what are your thoughts on this? He brushed it off. He said, you know, there's really, you know, then we would have to take, you know, away the, all the testing that was done before 1996. So I'm trying to find some concrete evidence of testing that was done. You mean since 1996? You mean since yeah. 1996? Right. Yeah. That, 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 that he bet my boss, I, I said, he said, he said that the Sprague Dolly rats are tumor prone anyway, so it wouldn't make any difference. Right. And, and I don't and I, I don't agree with that. So I'm trying to find I'm trying to find some um, research proving that because they you know, it's a two year lifespan. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. Right. And and every for everybody that just logged on with us what we're talking about is the Seralini study and the Anthony Samsell testing that just came out last week that glyphosate has been found in the, they call it lab chow, in the food that is given to hamsters and rats and guinea pigs and rabbits and actually pets as well. So um, th this food is contaminated with glyphosate which is an antibiotic, it's a chelator, it's an endocrine disruptor, it's been linked to tumors and um, infertility, liver disease, kidney disease all kinds of harmful things and you want to avoid it at all costs even in, in very nano particle amounts it's been shown to grow cancer cells um, and it is now being found in this in this lab food and as Anne is saying um, it's a very daunting uh, prospect because that means all the studies done since glyphosate has been sprayed on our food are null and void that completely upsets the apple cart of the entire basis of the scientific studies of our chemicals that have been approved of everything and um, that we know about chemicals and and how they've been tested on on animals so um, that's a huge point and so and they said they're not they're kind of not going to do anything about it right now they're just sort of assessing it is that it no they're just going to completely ignore it but but I'm there so I'm not going to let them. So. <laughs> okay, good. So, and this is just an example of what we can all do, is we can all raise awareness with our friends and family, like Jessica's doing. She does these little demonstrations, wonderful information. She just picks up sugar, you know, different snack bars, different uh, canned fish. I mean, who would ever think that there's GMOs in canned fish, right? And just ask the question. Just be in the inquiry. Does this contain GMOs or not? Do you want to buy this? Uh, what do you think about this? You know, and just ask questions. And you can do that in a very nice, non-confrontational way. Here's the pure cane sugar with GMOs because it's got cornstarch in it. Who would have thunk, right? Has, has anybody been, um, I mean, I know I have contacting Costco because they've been so wonderful that they're bringing in tons and tons of organic uh, produce, you know, organic frozen stuff. I mean, I was buying a ton there, but they're one of the big companies now that is going to start selling the GE salmon. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and so it's like insane. There yeah. are there are many petitions out right now. If you type in GE salmon plus petition, there are petitions out. I believe there is one for Costco. Um, there's been uh, ones for Safeway and you know different different stores for that. Friends of the Earth has been really great about um, being on top of the salmon issue and CalPERG, which is a student activist group. Um, there's a lot of different petitions, petitions going on around there. I know we get a little petition tired after a bit, but um, you know, you just never know if you get that petition to the right person, the right director or you know, owner of a company that they might say, listen, we've got to listen to our, um, you know, to the shoppers. we got to listen to the customers. The customers are always right. And guess what? Moms buy 85% of the food. So if you want your customers to be happy, you better be um, listening to your moms in your neighborhood, right? So we want to thank all of you. Any other last minute comments or questions? Jessica, one more? Yes. That little girl I was just taking care of, her dad works at Costco. I'm going to have to ask him about the salmon. <laughs> nice. Very good. You never Costco know. is. 
Costco is very, very supportive. If you fill out their comment cards, too, in the store, they always listen. That's great. Yeah, well, I, I think that over the past year or so, we've posted many times about thanking Costco, shopping at Costco. We've had days where it's like everybody go shop at Costco because right now they have a big you know, aisle out of organic food. I think that really helps. Every single one of us has like 500 to 1,000 Facebook friends. When we post something out there, it raises awareness exponentially. And um, yeah, and they are getting calls after you've comment, right? You, yeah, you can you can call them, you can comment. There you go, Costco popcorn, Costco uh, organic popcorn, organic chips. They've got we've got huge bags of organic vegetables, and so they're doing a great job. They are actually set to to make more money selling organic food than Whole Foods, mm -hmm. Costco, and that's great because they are mainstream America. It is and it, it's happening. Yeah, it's really cool to organize like shopping meetups too. Just everybody has to go shopping. Let's all do it at the same time. Do it together. You get a crowd. People ask yeah. you what you're doing. You read the labels. Everybody works together, finding you know whatever it needs. It's a really informative, great way to help educate people. And yeah, they're doing awesome. something they have to do anyway. Yes, I did one uh, one of those. I don't. Know, I think it was about a year ago with some friends and we videotaped it but I never got the videotape so that might be another thing if you're ambitious you just take your phone out with you and go shopping and um, you know with your little mom shopping uh, meetup group and all talk about the foods that you like because everybody tries different things right and you can all say oh I tried this and I loved it or my kids like tried this and they loved it and so that's a great idea is a Costco shopping trip um, whoever, whoever's going to be the first one to videotape that that'll be really fun to see, to see and to post Awesome ideas. I could talk to you guys all night, but I haven't eaten dinner yet. And uh, yeah, it's getting cold, so I'm gonna go eat with my family. I am so happy to have Jessica on finally, after knowing you for years, for you to do your presentation of um, vote with your dollar, right? Because here's the thing: no matter what happens with TPP tomorrow, no matter what happens with your state labeling. We can still vote with our dollar every time we go grocery shopping, and we can ban GMOs from our grocery tables, and we can um, we can absolutely get rid of glyphosate from our our diet by eating organic, by buying you know healthy traditions, CCOF, the the all these new labels that Jessica talked about. I'm going to share that one more time, and um, and then we'll then we'll go. Let's see. And if any of you need seafood, I have fishermen from Alaska to California. It's all about making connections with our food. Great. Awesome. Okay, so here's the labels. Can we get that flyer from Jessica? Yes, Jessica, we'll post that flyer on our on Moms Across America on our right. website under materials, and we will also post it on the Facebook page, if that's okay with you, Jessica. And I will tweet it out. <laughs> okay, great. So everybody take a look at these labels one more time. Thank you so much. This has been Moms Across America. Um, Moms Across America. Did everybody see that, the labels, or did I not share that? No? No. Okay, sorry, one more time. Let me share it. It's not opening up right now. Okay, here's the labels one more time. Share. Okay, there. you got it now? Yep. Biodynamic Healthy Traditions is the one that that um, is the test for glyphosate, CCOF, certified, naturally grown, also doesn't use CAFO manure, I did not know that. USDA Organic is definitely better than non-GMO Project Verified um, because it means non-GMO and no um, pesticides, but uh, still, you know, USDA has a long way to go with their organic, but we do want to um, also respect and uh, shop at these chains as well. So, okay, great job everyone. Thank you very much for a very informative hangout and um, we will see you next time. Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.